All right, welcome back to the channel, subscribers. If you are not, subs hey, let me not did this out of order. Hey, this is what we're gonna talk about in this video, man. Um, DAZN and ESPN really, man, they do not look healthy, man, at all. The, the things that these guys are doing are telling me that these that they might not be sticking around and boxing too much longer, man. It is just very, very lackluster over there. The newest stunt by DAZN is um, it just reeks of desperation. I've been covering DAZN and talking about DAZN since DAZN came out. And similar to other things, Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua related, I want to continue on with this story all the way to the end. <laughs> The zone is thinking about airing Antonio Brown versus Jake uh, versus Logan Paul. And this is after another YouTube fight between Jake Logan and some damn body is some like some soccer player or something. I'm not even sure who this guy is, but these are the major fights that the zone is printing is is presenting to their to their. um. To their subscribers. Obviously, Canelo's not getting it done. GGG's not getting it done. Anthony Joshua's not getting it done. Tevin Farmer's not getting it done. Let's talk about that in the whole kind of layout of the network, how this network war that started in 2018 is going in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel, subscribers. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And also, special, special thank you to everybody that uh, supports the channel in, in the mem as a members of the channel down there in the join. You can click join, man, LDBC. If you're in the LDBC, that would be greatly appreciated. We use this, the money for the uh, join for specific purposes. Also, Thank you so much to everybody that joins uh, in the Patreon and supports the Patreon and everybody that comes by the live streams Monday through Friday and OG Boxing Talk on Sunday. All right. So let's get into this, man. Uh, the zone came around. I think it was July of 2018. And they had this big pitch that they were going to provide us boxing fans the best fights possible. And because they had all this money that they were going to pour into signing fighters and getting these fighters over onto the zone platform. And they were going to do us a favor by getting rid of uh, pay-per-view. Right. That's their That was one of their major thing. Why would you pay seventy five dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever for pay-per-view when you can get these great quality fights for nine ninety nine a month? Nine ninety nine a month. Now, let's look, let's just skip forward and then we'll go back, but skip forward to where we are today. The great fights, are they charging us $9.99 a month? No. Less than two years later, closer to a year and a half later, they are charging us $20 a month. So the price is doubled and what are the fights that they're giving us? Not, but they have Canelo Alvarez, Sergey Kovalev. They have Gennady Golovkin against, I don't know. They had Anthony Joshua against, I don't care, except for a, a rematch with Andy, Andy Ruiz. They've had a couple good fights for the World Boxing Super Series. But the, but the, but the most successful shows that they have Many of them revolve around YouTubers. So for this $20 a month, we were for this $20 a month, we get to see Antonio Brown, a, a NFL wide receiver. I do believe Antonio uh, is a wide receiver uh, who's got a, all kind of different off off the court issue. I mean, off the field issues issues with his teams. I don't really keep up with Antonio Brown because, you know, there's more than enough uh, shit going wrong in the world for me to have to pay attention to what's going on with him and be like, man, I wish he'd get his act straight or man, they're not treating him right. I, I see that stuff every day. So I'll stick to I'll stick to watching that go on with like guys like Guillermo Rigondeaux and uh, 
Demetrius Andre over on the zone and how he can't seem to get a fight. But they're selling us that. Another YouTube fight after Jake Paul, after Paul Logan fought KSI on the zone. Now I'm paying to watch these guys fight regardless of whether or not I actually want to fight them and I actually want to see them fight or not. So clearly the zone is not quite living up to the promise that they originally made. And on top of that, there is rumble. There's rumblings of of the zone getting a pay-per-view option. Now, what is less what it what could be more uh, unsuccessful <laughs> Then if your original pitch was getting rid of pay-per-view for you to look at be become looking at uh, begin looking at pay-per-view options. Now, that's not coming from the zone that didn't come from Eddie Hearn that came from somewhere else. So, you know, you can take it for a grain of salt for the time being. However, if they continue to have to pay these gigantic purses to Anthony Joshua and Canelo Alvarez and they're paying them more money then they're actually bringing in for the zone worldwide. And I mean that. They pay more money to Anthony Joshua and Canelo Alvarez than the zone is pulling in in their fees worldwide. They are taking a loss for sure because the boxing cuz boxing is a major cost center for the zone. So it wouldn't surprise me if they said Let's be try to let's try to offset some of that cost by starting a pay-per-view, starting to do things on pay-per-view. Because that's what HBO did. That's why we got this. HP started having a, 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 a marked decrease in the in the value of the pay-per-views we were getting for show for HBO when they started putting uh, guys like. Gennady Golovkin on pay-per-view and they put fights like I do believe like Canelo Alvarez and Liam Walsh on pay-per-view that if that wasn't on paper I believe that was on pay-per-view but it seemed like they were just had more and more pay-per-views because they weren't looking at pay-per-view as a way to generate a lot of money for the fighters they were looking at pay-per-view as a way to offset their own internal costs because if we the the fight fan are paying for it directly then it didn't have to come out of hbo's boxing budget and they could continue to show fights but we would just be paying extra for it and that my friend is looks like if that's and that seems like the only logical next step for the zone for the zone to say look we've got to pay for these these we've got canelo we've got anthony joshua um we need to uh but we're spending a lot of money on these guys let's make people pay uh pay-per-view uh with let's put canelo alvarez on pay-per-view for these fight we'll put canelo we'll try to make a Can canelo alvarez gennady golovkin but make it pay-per-view get a zone get a pay-per-view option or mechanism for the zone so now you're not paying twenty dollars a month for canelo alvarez you really are just paying the twenty dollars a month to go see uh a wide receiver uh fight a youtuber uh <laughs> a wide receiver fight a youtuber that looks like he's on steroids it's just it, the whole thing is ridiculous and you see this not only that with espn as well espn the numbers for espn are down dramatically for the last two uh oh, since they started showing fights on es on regular espn if you look at the terrence crawford fight the difference between the first terrence crawford on regular espn and the and the terrence crawford fight that just took place with uh egas Kalvinakis, it his viewership dropped by dropped by a million it just the zone doesn't have very many eyes ESPN doesn't have a lot of interest in promoting the fights. They quickly shoved boxing over to the ESPN Plus app, which means, hey, again, like in a mini pay-per-view type of setting that we have to pay extra money to watch uh, to watch a lot of these fights on ESPN Plus. So that was a way to kind of offset the cost from their budget, just like the pay-per-view, but probably to a lesser extent, man. So, you know, my takeaway from this is that, look, there's really only one organization that seems as if they are really generating a lot of interest for boxing and that is fox 
and Fox paper Fox the uh, fighters on Fox and it seems as if Showtime although Showtime lost a lot of the big stars that it had the bigger stars that they were making and it become more of a feeder that they actually look like they're staying relatively solid right because they're not spending a tremendous amount of money Showtime itself like the the network is not so invested in creating its own movies and things like HBO that it risks what whatever budget they have for boxing and boxing still is a very attractive thing for Showtime. So, you know, it's just this whole network war, the way that it's panning out just seems to be like a big extension of the you know, dislike for the PBC and the model that the PBC was taking. But the I thought the most successful thing about the PBC is was not necessarily its desire to get fighter fights on t- television for free, even though they succeeded in that with Fox. But it is their interest in American fighters and selling American fighters to American fight fans. That seems like the most realistic and the most the the, the easiest key to success. I don't see how DAZN is going to do that by selling British British um and you know a mexican fighter who you know canelo alvarez mexican mexico a little bit different because that's borders the united states and there's a very big mexican population so that works that works for for the mexican fighter but i don't understand how they're going to do it selling the mexican fighter fighting you know the liam smiths and the callum smiths guys that are from the uk and it seems like they're trying to follow like the same model and they got a lot of the same fighters that led to the downfall of uh Uh, or the decreased popularity of HBO boxing to begin with. But anyway, it is what it is. That's my take on it. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out.